Today, I'm going to be talking about the Klein Tools CL800. Now, stay tuned to the end of the video because this is going to be a master class on all the plethora of features that Klein Tools has packed into this one tiny, rugged clamp-on hand meter. So with that said, let's get into it. Okay, we've made it over to our workbench. Real quick, I've laid out everything that this CL800 does come with. As you can see, it does come with a soft carrying bag, large enough to carry everything, so that's really nice. Of course, we've got our meter itself. These are the temperature probes, and then your standard DMM red and black multimeter leads. Now, real quick before we go any further, I have dropped a link in the description where you can pick up this entire kit on Amazon for super cheap, so check that out below in the description. Real quick, I'm going to show you all the buttons and dial features of the Klein Tools CL800 before we get into using each one. So we have the zero slash select button right here. The select button is going to toggle between these different features on your dial. You have your NCV button right there. That's the non-contact voltage button. I'll show you how to use that here in just a few minutes. Of course, we have our range button, which is going to move your decimal point on your display here or put it into auto range. We also have our min max button here if you want to view your min max readings as you go. Over to the dial, we have our first up voltage. Voltage AC and voltage DC if you were to use your shift button. One more click is the amperage AC and amperage DC. We have our resistance slash diode feature. One more click brings us into the Hertz and duty cycle functions. Another click brings us into the capacitance feature. One more is our Fahrenheit and Celsius temperature readings. And then finally, we have our low Z or low impedance feature. And first up is the AC and DC voltage feature. Now, this is a pretty common feature that most people know how to use, but I'll show you on my voltage strip here. So right now we're in the voltage AC. And as you can see, I have about 121.5 volts AC here on a US power strip. Next up is a typical 9 volt DC battery. So to get into DC, simply push the orange button. Now we're in DC voltage. Place your leads across the terminals. And as you can see, I have a fresh 9 volt here at 9.29 volts DC. So that's how you would use the DC voltage function. One click up into the amperage features. As you can see, I've got a typical toaster right here, and I'll use this to demonstrate how you could take an AC amperage reading with this Klein CL800. So first we're gonna make sure that we're in the AC amperage reading. You have an A right here, so we know we're in AC amperage with our wavy line for alternating current. We're gonna place it around just one lead of our extension cord here that's plugged in to the toaster. And as you can see, I just have one lead from the extension cord running through the clamp-on meter. It's important that you don't clamp around both of those because you will not get an accurate reading whatsoever. And as you can see right now, we're reading zero amps with the toaster off. We'll place the toaster on. Immediately we get around 6.35, roughly 6.4 amps AC. This is a good way you could go around your house and check out what your appliances are actually using as far as power. And if we pop the toaster off, you can see our amperage drops back down to zero. So we're reading zero amps on this toaster, so it's not using any current or any power while it's off, which is good. If we were wanting to check DC amperage, the process is a little bit more involved. You actually have to use your red and black leads here, and you're inserting your meter in series in line with your circuit you're checking your DC current on. It's a little bit more involved. Watch this video right here. I actually explain it and show you a quick example of testing your DC current using your red and black DMM leads. Now you can also use your clamp feature for DC current. These are gonna be your big battery banks, stuff like that. If your DC system has a wire, you can literally just clamp this clamp around one wire again in that system, and it will show you the current that's being pulled off your DC system. So that is another way you can check a DC battery bus or a DC current system very quickly and easily using the clamp feature there. 
We've clicked up one more time into the resistance slash diode check, and I'm going to show you a few examples of how you might use this around your house. And for this example, I've grabbed my breadboard. I'm going to check a resistor and a diode right here off the breadboard, but most likely around your house, you're going to be checking for high resistance on wires or even broken wires. So you'd have an open circuit like you're showing there right now. Now, the first thing you want to do is put in continuity mode. So you have your little speaker symbol there, touch your two leads together, make sure you're getting somewhere around zero ohms. That means you're touching, there's no little to no resistance on your circuit. Once you've checked your meter, you can grab a resistor or whatever you're checking. And as you can see, this resistor here is about 468 ohms. So that's a good resistor. If you have a circuit like this, it's also a good way you can check your resistors to make sure they're not damaged or fading away. Okay, and to test the diode feature, we're gonna go ahead and hit our orange select button until we see the diode symbol right there. Now we know we're in the diode feature. We'll pull off our light emitting diode here. Now diodes are directional. You'll notice that one lead is usually longer one is shorter. Now we'll put the black lead on the shorter leg and the red lead on the positive longer leg. And as you can see, we have about 1.774 volts. Flip the diode over and read it backwards. We should be getting an open just like we see there because again, diodes are directional. They only allow current to flow in one direction. Okay, next we've clicked into the Hertz slash duty cycle here. So if we want to read a Hertz reading on the Klein CL800, I'm going to show you a quick example on how to read that on a power strip. Now you can also use the meter itself, bring it close to any kind of power source, and it will show you the frequency of that power. So right here, I've just inserted my red lead into the positive side of this power strip. And you can see we're reading about 59.98 Hertz. Now here in the US, most of our appliances, most of our electrical products are gonna be right around 60 Hertz. And Hertz is simply one over an amount of time. So it's basically 60 cycles on the AC wave every second, which gives you 60 Hertz. Okay, now we're into the duty cycle, which is the orange percentage there. You can also see the percentage on our screen right there. Now, for ease of example, I'm using a power strip, but you can check the duty cycle of any appliance in your home. Now, this is going to be an AC check of the on to off time of the circuit. So the duty cycle is a percentage of on time as opposed to off time. Now, this is an alternating current, which is about a 50% on to off time because it's on and off, on and off like that in a wave. And as you can see, we're getting roughly 50% on our meter. So we know that this power strip is functioning correctly at around 50% for our AC sine wave. Next up is our capacitance. So we'll move it one click up into the capacitance mode. I've brought in an AC capacitor here. This is gonna be for your air conditioning run motor. So this is gonna be your outside unit a lot of times AC technicians will tell you that these are failing and out of tolerance and I'll show you what they're talking about right here. In this particular Titan Pro motor run AC capacitor right here it's rated for about 80 microfarads and then you'll see a tolerance plus or minus five percent. So you'll have to do a little bit of math here but it should be right around 80 microfarads on the meter. Okay, and as you can see, this one does have three. You're gonna see one that has a C and one that says Herm. Those are the two contacts that you want to put your leads on. And as you can see, we're getting a 79.6 across the C to Herm contacts. So we are definitely within that 80 plus or minus 5%. So we know this capacitor is good. I'll show you on another capacitor just to show you how easy these capacitors are to check. Okay, and we're getting 5.134 there. So we do know that this five microfarad capacitor is good. This is a very handy feature on the Klein CL800 that you can use around your house. Just remember in a live situation to always use an insulated screwdriver using the metal contact across your two terminals right there before testing because capacitors are temporary batteries that do store electricity. So be very careful when testing these. Okay, next up is our temperature reading. 
We have Fahrenheit and Celsius right there. We're gonna start out with Fahrenheit. This is a real easy one. You're just gonna plug your probe into the red and black terminals on the bottom. You have your temperature probe right there. And this quite warm room right now with the lights on, we're reading about, eh, about 80 to 81 degrees Fahrenheit. If you wanted to read in Celsius, quickly hit that orange button right there. And we're looking at about 26.4 degrees Celsius for all our Canadian friends. It could be a very handy feature, again, included with the CL800, which I have thrown the link in the description. Again, check that out. This thing has been a lifesaver. Okay, last up on the dial, we'll click it one more time. And we're now into the low Z or low impedance function. It does include AC and the orange DC there, if you were to hit the function button there. This one's a little bit tricky and using this around your home is not as common, but if you were looking for a ghost voltage, ghost voltages are unwanted or spurious voltages that can appear in a circuit due to capacitive coupling or other factors. A low Z meter can help identify and eliminate these ghost voltages. Now a ghost voltage, let's say if you have a three wire Romex bundle and you're getting some kind of voltage on your negative copper ground wire, this is most likely a ghost voltage. It's an induction voltage from the hot wire into our neutral or our ground copper wire. So you're easily able to see if it's a ghost voltage by putting it into the low Z mode. This allows the meter itself to run a load through your red and black leads into the circuit and it will cause you to lose that ghost voltage. So if you're reading a funky voltage on your regular voltage check, throw it into low Z and check it that way. If you lose that funky voltage and it stabilizes with the correct voltage that you're seeing, you are most likely reading a ghost voltage on your regular voltage check right here. There's one more feature I want to show you, and that is the non-contact voltage feature. It's an extra bonus feature that they've decided to include right into the meter which is really, really helpful and awesome. Saves you money and time of pulling out a whole nother meter. To use this feature, we're actually gonna have to hold down the NCV button. And what this does is it alerts you with this red light right here, as you'll see in a second, whenever you are around a hot voltage power source. So if we hold this down and you can see it's already coming on, it's alerting us that we do have a hot power voltage on this circuit. This is a very handy safety feature that can definitely save you from getting zapped when you're working around live circuits. So again, we're holding it down. As soon as we get near the power source, it is coming on, alerting us that we do have a hot circuit. Okay, just one more example. I'm on my iPhone power charger right there. You can see that we still have our red light because we have a hot circuit coming through this wire. But if I were to turn the circuit off, you can see that we have lost power because we've turned power off to the block. Friends, if you loved this video, Check out this one right here. I think you're really going to love it. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel right here. It really does something to the algorithm and it lets it push out to so many more people. I truly appreciate it and see you on the next Electrical U.